In an earlier video, we talked about the degrees of unsaturation, how to calculate degrees of unsaturation. Well, now we're going to look at the N plus one rule and its purpose, right? Because when we start looking at proton NMR, we need to kind of have all these tools in our toolbox. So given a molecular formula, we're able to, you know, come up with a sensible bond line structure uh, that goes along in line with the N plus one rule for degrees of unsaturation, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see if we're given, what if we're given a molecule like this? Right, and we're asked to predict the multiplicities or the splitting pattern around uh, these three protons, uh, these two protons, right? Also, these three protons, right? So, the first thing I'm going to do is just convert this to a bond line structure. So, you can see, all right, I have. A chlorine here, CH3, CH2, a chlorine here, but I have two chlorines and a CH3. Now, if we want to predict the splitting pattern of all these hydrogens, well, remember, these hydrogens will count as one, right? Uh, the integration, right, or how many, when, when I shine a, a you know, uh, plain polarized, uh, when I shine light through this molecule, these hydrogens will vibrate, right? They will vibrate. The integration is three, right? The integration is three, but these hydrogens will vibrate. And usually your CH3s and your CH2s, uh, they usually rotate, but if the molecule is not symmetrical, we will only see one signal. So we will only see one signal for these hydrogen protons here. So now I'm going to look at the next carbon adjacent to these protons and say, okay, well, what is my N? How many protons do I have neighboring uh, this carbon that has these three hydrogens here? So I could see that on this carbon here, I have zero protons, right? So therefore the N plus one, N plus one rule predicts that zero plus one is just one. So therefore I would see a singlet. Uh, uh, in terms of this pudding pattern here. Here, you can see that we have these two hydrogens here, right? And even though they count as two, the integration is two, uh, but we will only see one signal uh, for this carbon here. And so well, for these protons here. And, and so we're gonna look at the neighboring hydrogens, neighboring these two protons here, right? So we can see that we have none here. However, we have three CH, uh, we have three hydrogens here neighboring this, this, this. Uh, the CH2 here. So the N plus one rule says, well, we have three hydrogens, so three plus one is just four. So therefore, on the NMR spectrum, I should see a quartet no. splitting pattern there, all right? And similar for this, and similar for this rather, right? These three protons, what, what will I see? They, they, I would only see one signal, but what will be the splitting pattern for this CH3 here? Well, again, I have two hydrogens neighboring this, uh, uh, these protons here. So again, two plus one is three. And so therefore we would see a triplet on NMR, NMR spectrum uh, for the splitting pattern for these protons. So let's look at a couple more. So what if we were given this molecule here? Here's three, and then I have a methyl group here, and then no. So what if I was given this molecule here, and I was asked to put it, uh, predict the splitting pattern um, of these protons here, this proton here, and remember we have a hydrogen here in this proton here. So what would be the splitting pattern? Well, for this, again, look at what's neighboring this hydrogen. It's only an oxygen. So there's no protons adjacent to this proton or this hydrogen here. So N plus one rule says that, well, zero plus one is just one. So therefore, on the NMR spectrum, I should see a singlet for this. For this proton here, we'll look at what's neighboring it. I have three hydrogens uh, neighboring this proton, right? I have three hydrogens, right? I have three hydrogens, but I also have a carbon that has uh, 
also have a carbon that has uh, three hydrogens, uh, right? So we also have this that has three hydrogens, All right? So therefore, for this proton, we have six neighboring protons plus one. So therefore, I, I should see a septet for this. The septet should, should pop up for that one. All right now for these, well, again, only have one neighboring hydrogen. So therefore, n plus one rule says that I have a singlet. Well, doublet because there's one so one plus one is two and that's a doublet and similar for this this will also be a doublet this will also be a doublet all right now let's take a look at let's see a few more all right so what if i were given this molecule here and i was asked to predict the splitting pattern around these protons and these protons right well, again, taking a look at this proton, what's my neighboring carbon? How many does it have? How many how many hydrogens does it have? Well, what would be the splitting pattern for this? Well, again, I can see that I have one neighbor, so this would just be a doublet, right? And again, one neighbor comes from here. Remember, we have a hydrogen here, so be careful. We have a hydrogen here. Going here, there's a CH3, the, the, na the neighboring carbon doesn't have any protons so so i could only go in this direction and that would just be one which would be a doublet now these three pro these pro uh, three protons are equivalent we only see one signal for them but the adjacent carbon how many protons does it have zero so therefore you only see a singlet for this one plus zero is just one all right and maybe we should uh, go through a couple more examples all right, so maybe you're given this ether here. All right, we have a hydrogen, and we were asked to predict the splitting pattern around that proton and these three protons here. All right, well, again, take a look at what we have. Well, this these three protons going down the carbon line the next adjacent carbon has only one hydrogen so therefore these three protons are equivalent so therefore we will only see a singlet well a doublet it's easy to get tripped up right one plus one is two so that would be a doublet now this proton well how many hydrogens neighbor in this proton this one is a little bit tricky well again going a carbon adjacent we have three meth we have three hydrogens but also here we have two hydrogens so five plus one is six so therefore we will see a sextet uh for the splitting pattern of that molecule of that molecule and so these are the different ways we could predict splitting patterns and uh this will give us great inside tools as to how we're going to come up with you know, good bond line structures given a molecular formula.